Okay, folks, so in the last class, what did we see? We saw that the variance of beta hat was yeah, where sigma square was the variance of the error term and summation xi minus x bar square was the deviation, sum of the de squared deviations of each of the xi's from its mean, right? Okay, we also saw that if you divide this by n and if you divide this by n, this becomes a more insightful quantity, right? So what is the numerator? The numerator is sigma square upon n. The denominator can be written as sigma square upon n upon sigma square x, okay? Where sigma square x gives you what is the variability in x. Sigma square e gives you, sigma square gives you the variability in the error term n is the number of observations, yeah? And what does this mean? This means that larger the variability in the error term relative to the variability of x, the more imprecise are your OLS estimators, right? Is this theoretically, does everyone understand it intuitively? Right. This says that more, so, so what's your model? Your model is yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi plus ei. Sigma square is the variance of ei. Sigma square x is the variance of x. So it says y varies because of two things. y varies because x varies, y varies because the error term varies. Beta tells you how much, what happens to y if x changes by one unit. Now in order to have a precise estimate of beta, Right. This says that this estimate will be more imprecise the larger the variability in y, which comes from variability in sigma in, in, in the sigma in the error term relative to the variability in x. Right? Assume that if there is no change in x at all, then you can't really get a sense of beta because beta tells you how y changes with x. If most of the times y changing because the error term changes and not because x varies, right, then you cannot really very precisely say how much y changes with x. Whereas if all the variation in x, in, in y is coming from the variation in x and very little of it is coming from sigma square, the variance of the error term, then your ability to say how y varies with x is a lot, right? Our ability to say why y varies with x is a lot, sure? For example, Suppose y is the marks which you score at the end of the semester examination and x is your attendance, okay? Now suppose it were so that your marks really depended only on your attendance plus a random error term, right? So in the sense what happened, right? Sure. Now if most of the variation in y could be explained because of the variation in x, most of the variation in y is predominantly, if there's a lot of variation in x and very little variation in the residual error term, then it would mean that you have a lot of information to say how y changes with x. Whereas, if a lot of variation was coming from the error term, it came from your motivation levels, your intelligence levels, your previous preparedness, etc., etc., right? Okay, so really a lot of variation in y was predominantly the variation y was caused by the variation in the error term rather than by your attendance, then your ability to say how much y changes, person's marks change, if his attendance change a little bit, will be very imprecise. That is what is really given to you by this formula or this formula, right? Okay, or you could write it as basically this by this. This is what we'll be using it most of the time. This also clearly says that if you have a larger number of observations, then the variance of beta hat is lower. Okay? What does this graphically mean? Graphically, it means the following. Think of so beta hat is a random variable, it'll have a probability distribution. Right? What kind of probability distribution will it have? It will have the following type of probability distribution. We saw yesterday that beta hat can be written as 
summation xi upon summation xi square yi, right? This was x1 upon summation xi square into y1 plus x2 into summation xi square into y2 plus up to yn, right? Now we assume that this is a constant, we assume that this is a constant, we assume that this is a constant. So beta hat is y1 into a constant plus y2 into a constant plus y3 into a constant up to yn into a constant, right? Now what is, but is y1 a constant? No, y1 is a random variable because the actual value of y1 depends upon what is the value of the error term, right? Because yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi plus ei alpha and beta and xi are constant. So yi will have a probability distribution. And if the error term is normal, the distribution for yi will also be normal, right? Is this clear absolutely? yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi plus ei, right? Alpha, beta, x are all constants, right? For each, you know, so, 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 the, so the probability distribution of yi is given by the probability distribution of the error term. If the error term is normally distributed, y i will be normally distributed. Sure? Is this clear to everybody? So what this means is beta hat then is a variable which is a normally distributed random variable into a constant plus another normally distributed variable into a constant and so on. Which means that beta hat must also be normally distributed. Right? Okay. Now, so we know about beta hat. Beta hat must be normally distributed. We saw that expected value of beta hat is equal to beta if the covariance of x and is zero. So the mean of beta hat must be beta. And the variance of beta hat must be sigma square upon summation xi square. Right? So graphically, what does the what 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 this, this is called the property of linearity, by the way. Okay, this is called the property of linearity, by the way. And for this to hold, it is obviously very important that the error term be normally distributed. If the error term is not normally distributed, this won't hold. Right? So whatever I'm doing now assumes that the error term is normally distributed. Okay? So what this means graphically is the following. Graphically, it means that if you think of this, okay, and say this is your beta beta, this is the probability distribution of your beta hat. This spread depends upon what is sigma square upon summation xi square. Or equivalently, sigma square upon n upon sigma square upon n upon sigma square x. So if sigma square increases, this spread becomes more. Yeah? If sigma square goes down, this spread becomes smaller. Okay? If summation xi square, sigma square x increases, this spread becomes smaller. If sigma square x goes down, this spread becomes bigger. If n increases, this spread becomes smaller. If n goes down, this spread becomes bigger. Now this spread, what does this spread tell you? It tells you, what, is, what, is, what does this, this picture tell you? This picture tells you that on an average, beta hat is equal to beta. But this spread is a measure of how far away each individual beta hat is likely to be from beta. We realize that what is the variance? The variance is the average distance of an observation from the mean. So what is the variance of beta hat? It says if you take one particular random sample and calculate beta hat, it is a measure of how far this beta hat is likely to be on an average from the true beta. Right? Now obviously, for good estimators, you require this distance to be smaller rather than larger. So you would prefer an estimator with a smaller variance compared to an estimator with a larger variance. Now this says, therefore, that if the, if the variance of sigma square is large related to the variance of x, your, your estimator will have a larger variance or your estimator would be more 
imprecise. Larger variance would mean more imprecise. Lower variance would mean more precise. Right? Okay? If you have a larger n, you would get a more precise estimator. If you have a small n, the estimator would be more imprecise. Right? Is this clear? Now, this also means, therefore, that as we saw yesterday, if you have a model y i is equal to alpha plus beta 1 x 1 i plus beta 2 x 2 i plus e i, and instead of that, suppose you omitted x 2 i, right? So your model where y i is equal to alpha plus beta 1 x 1 i plus v i, where v i would now be this. So the variance of vi, which should be here now, will be the variance of this term, beta 2 square into variance of x2 plus variance of this, plus sigma square. So the numerator here would be larger if you omit a variable. So your estimators will be more imprecise, right? If this estimator, that of course assumes that this estimator is not correlated with this. Because if, if, if this is correlated with this, then obviously the new error term vi will also be correlated with x1i and will not be able to get the OLS estimator. But even when this and this are not correlated, if you omit this variable, then you will have a much larger variance for beta hat. Your beta hat will be more imprecise. Okay? Your beta hat will be more imprecise. So that's something that you should always